The big challenge when it comes to drop shipping, though, is finding a drop shipper. This is very clearly a business model that has more benefits for the marketer, and so, of course, not everyone is going to be eager to offer their services. How do you go about finding a drop shipper when they're in such short supply? Well, there are a number of options. But with any digital business, we tend to prefer keeping things simple and cheap. In this case, the best place for you to start is by looking at websites that act as directories for dropshippers, wholesalers and manufacturers. One great site that will do all this is Alibaba, which you'll find here at alibaba.com. Another good one is Worldwide Brands, which you'll find here at worldwidebrands.com. The latter is probably preferable, as this specifically features dropshipping companies and has a large number of advantages for dropshipping businesses. For example, you can use this site to make sure that you're dealing with the real wholesaler. What does that mean? Well, it means that you can avoid making the mistake of signing up to sell products that someone else is dropshipping to you, thereby scraping profit from you. This is a common practice and one to be careful of when you're just starting out. Worldwide Brands is perfect if you plan on finding a dropshipping manufacturer quickly and selling their products on eBay or Amazon. The only problem with this plan is is that there's a fairly hefty sign-up fee. Currently, it costs $249. OK, so that's not astronomical, and this is a lifetime membership. But if you were attracted to dropshipping initially because you wanted a business model with zero overhead, then it might be a little off-putting, especially as your break-even point has now been pushed back further. So, there is a free review, though, at the time that I'm making this video. So another option is to try ThomasNet, which you can find here at thomasnet.com, which, like Alibaba, has a selection of different types of manufacturers and wholesalers selling different types of products and different types of services. Makers Row, which is makersrow.com, might also be worth checking out. Some other paid options include SaleWho and Doba, and a great free choice is Wholesale Central. Failing that, another good strategy is just to search Google. When you know the type of product you want to sell, just try searching for that product on Google with the word dropshippers and your location. So, if you're hoping to dropship clothing in the UK, then you can just search for clothing dropshippers UK, and you can see it brings up a whole load of different ones here and one that I looked at earlier was this one fashiondropshippers.com which seems to do exactly what we want. Or perhaps you're looking for a white label supplement dropshipper in the US. In that case we can search white label supplement dropshipping US and amongst a lot of the ones here which you can see one that we find is Vox Nutrition, which you can find here, voxnutrition.com, and it lets us do exactly just that. And it's pretty simple and straightforward method, and there are more and more businesses like this springing up all the time to meet demand. Vox Nutrition will handle formulation, production, and fulfillment on your behalf, making things nice and simple. The third and final strategy for finding your online dropshippers is just to contact the companies you like directly. Find manufacturers for products you'd like to sell and drop them an email. Better yet, try messaging them via LinkedIn or a similar avenue and see if you can get them to respond that way. You know, this way, your message will stand out from their crowded inbox. You could even visit stores in person and ask the owner if you could have the contact details for the company that sold them X product. And this works better for smaller, privately owned stores, of course. If the company doesn't already offer the drop shipping services you're looking for, then just explain to them the benefits and why you would like the opportunity to sell their products in this manner. In many cases, they will acquiesce and you'll be able to start selling a product that other online retailers don't have access to. 
Another tip for finding manufacturers that you can email directly is to look on eBay. Search for a product you'd like to sell and if you notice there are lots of people selling the exact same item, then this is a sign that they're using a dropshipper. It could then be a relatively simple matter for you to track down that original manufacturer and contact them so that you can try to do business with them yourself. Note that many wholesalers and manufacturers don't have a great online presence. This means it can be necessary to dig really deep in Google or try looking at trade magazines and papers instead in order to help find your potential partners. When you're dealing with dropshippers, it's crucial that you do your homework and look and act like a professional. Now, here are some tips to help you do just that. First of all, you'll need a resale certificate. Not all, but many dropshipping companies will want proof that you're a real retailer and not a consumer before they do business with you. Their concern is that consumers will simply claim to be dropshippers or resellers so that they can get items on the cheap. To provide this proof, you might need an EIN number for your business if you're in the United States. And you can find out more here at the IRS website. The URL is quite long and complicated, so if you just go to Google and type in apply for EIN online, you'll be redirected to this particular site. Now, in other countries, obviously the regulations are different, so you need to look at the uh, tax authority for your country. But again, a search in Google should be uh, enough to point you in the right direction. You might also need a resale certificate. And you can find out more about those at this site here, which is wisegeek.org forward slash what hyphen is hyphen a hyphen resale hyphen certificate dot htm. If you're going to speak in person, then it can also be a good idea to familiarize yourself with all the terminology regarding dropshipping so that you don't sound like an amateur. You should also look out for fake dropshippers. When choosing dropshippers, there are a number of businesses you need to look out for. These are not really dropshippers in the truest sense of the word. You need to avoid these companies as they won't always get you the best deals and they might not be able to offer you the same kind of value as other organizations. Be aware of companies that want ongoing fees, which real dropshippers don't require. Likewise, be careful of companies that also sell directly to the public. These companies often aren't really dropshippers so much as resellers who are just trying to trick you into making a bulk order. While monthly fees and direct commercial sales are warning signs, there are a few caveats and requirements that you may need to go along with. We've already seen that many dropshipping companies will require you to provide a resale certificate and likewise you might find that you need to apply for an account before you can begin using their services. And this will normally involve filling out a form and explaining the nature of your business and so on. Now some companies also require you to place a minimum order for your first sale. This is another strategy they can use to drive away consumers, as well as merchants who are just window shopping and may not use their products in future. So, for example, you might have a minimum first order of $500, which is a little bit contrary to the entire concept of dropshipping, as you'll now have a bunch of inventory sitting around and the potential risk of losing that upfront investment. So, what can you do? Well, the best advice is to ask if you can use this initial expense as credit. Pay the first $500 and then use that amount in order to offset future sales until they've paid the full amount off. Drop them an email or speak in person to discuss this option. A lot of people just starting out are going to be very eager to find a partner to work with and will feel privileged when they get a positive response to their inquiry. It's an exciting feeling and certainly a compliment being given the go-ahead to sell on behalf of a manufacturer. But at the same time, you also need to be a bit discriminating in your choice. Don't go for the first company that's willing to work with you. Make sure they're actually up to scratch. One thing to be careful of is quality control, and in this regard, you often get what you pay for. 
Be sure to ask the company what quality control measures they have in place in order to prevent problems like defective products and faults. Likewise, speak with them regarding their delivery times and packaging. Remember that it's your reputation that's going to be riding on the quality of their products and service, so you need to ensure that you're happy with it. Another tip in this regard is to always ask for a sample of the product. If you have demonstrated their ability to sell and they truly are a big business, they should see it as a very small investment to provide a sample of what they're selling. And if they won't, then order a product yourself as a customer. You really don't want to put your name to anything that you haven't personally checked out first.